Did A-list Hollywood actor Matthew McConaughey just reveal that Hollywood has a initiation process? And for the record, these are not my words. This is not clickbait. This is what Matthew McConaughey actually said. In a recent article with People Magazine, he said, well, why didn't they tell me that in year two? Because there's an initiation process. Now, Matthew McConaughey has been outspoken about his faith in Hollywood for over a decade. And or if you have Christian values, a lot of people frown upon that. Why do you think that is? And have you, have you had difficulties with that? But I have had moments where I was on stage receiving an award in front of my peers in Hollywood. There were people in the crowd that I have prayed with. And when I thank God, I saw some of those people. Being with a spouse for over 12 years, having little kids and championing fatherhood, he stands out from the typical Hollywood relationship status. But what we're going to explore in this video is what happens when a Christian stands firm in his belief in the middle of all the anti-God Hollywood agenda. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire people to live a life that blesses God. If you're new here or if you're not new here, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button as a huge percentage of the people that watch this channel regularly are unfortunately not subscribed. All right, let's jump into this video. Now, before we get into what Matthew McConaughey said about this quote unquote initiation process, let's rewind a few years back when Matthew McConaughey went on Joe Rogan and was asked, how does his faith play a role in the things he's dealing with in Hollywood? Have you encountered difficulty expressing this uh, in Hollywood, particularly if you're a fundamentalist Christian or if you have Christian values? A lot of people frown upon that. Why, why, why do you think that is? And have you, have you had difficulties with that? First and foremost, did you guys catch that Rogan kind of calls Matthew McConaughey a fundamentalist Christian in this video? You notice Matthew's uh, smirk and smile here. I found that extremely interesting. Okay, let's hear his response though. I don't know, I, I haven't had difficulties. I have had, <laughs> and I won't throw any people under the bus, but I have had moments where I was on stage receiving an award in front of my peers in Hollywood. There were people in the crowd that I have prayed with before dinners many times. And when I thank God, I saw some of those people go to clap, but then notice that, <laughs> well, well, it's gonna be a bad thing on my resume and then sit back on their hands. <laughs> oh, wow. And actually, wow. I've seen people read the room and go, whoa, that wouldn't bode well for me in the future. Mm. That's crazy. Just clapping for an acceptance speech that he gave where he thanks God. He's making a claim that some of these folks that were in the audience that he had privately prayed with were hesitant because it could potentially have a negative impact on their acting career. Now let's flash back to 2014 and examine the actual speech that he's referencing in this conversation with Joe Rogan. Okay, so this is him winning the Oscar for the best actor at the 2014 Oscar Awards. I wanna thank Jean-Marc Vallée, our director. <laughs> Chad Leto, Jennifer Garner, who I worked with daily. Um, there's a few things, about three things to my account that I need each day. Now, first off, I wanna thank God because that's who I look up to. He has graced my life with opportunities that I know are not of my hand or any other human hand. The golf claps, <laughs> when he thanks God, it's just, but when he thanks the director or someone else, there was no issues. So this is what he was referencing to. And I'm guessing from his vantage point, as he's looking out to the crowd, it was probably different than even us hearing it, right? That there was probably people he knew that he's prayed with, as he said in the Rogan interview that didn't. So that's very interesting in just the, the, the contrast of clapping here. It's a scientific fact that gratitude reciprocates. Mm -hmm. um, in the words of the late Charlie Lawton, who said, when you got God, you got a friend, and that friend is you. <laughs> to my family. <laughs> The hesitancy to clap is so obvious to me. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be based on how he described it on Rogan. I thought it was going to be crickets, but it's definitely golf clap vibes. Now, in a moment, I'm going to share a Bible verse that I think absolutely encompasses what Matthew McConaughey is saying here. But before we get into that, I just wanted to be known that this is not an endorsement of everything he's ever done. As in this exact article, he says that I, like anyone, had had ups and downs. My star meter has been higher. My star meter has been lower. I've won Oscars. I've been arrested playing the bongos naked. He's referencing a time in 1999 where following a noise complaint officers it says entered his home and found him dancing uh, naked with bongo drums, marijuana, and a bong on the coffee table. He declared his innocence, resisted arrest, 
and was taken to jail. I think Matthew would agree that, you know, he has a past and he's gone through things, but it seems as of late, he's been fairly solid and consistent in his convictions and some of his proclamations about faith in God. Overall, I believe this inherent goodwill for me, but it did not keep me from figuring out my own initiation into the industry. There's a lot of things you learn 10 years after being in Hollywood. And you go, well, why didn't they tell me that in year two? Because there's an initiation process. There just is. You can get tips, but you've got to figure out the BS. Cut the wheat from the chaff. So the figure of speech comes from Matthew 3, which is actually about Jesus before John baptizes. Check out Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. He, who is he? Jesus, is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. Now, here is an image of what separating the chaff from the wheat is, meaning the chaff is the outer covering of the wheat. It is the disposable part, the aspect of the grains that we don't need. So it's separating what we don't need from what we do need. So Matthew 3 says that is what Jesus came to do. Matthew McConaughey said that is what he had to do while navigating Hollywood. How I think this relates to you and I is that Hollywood allowing him to go through some of these challenges without guiding him much and him having to figure out on his own is correlated to how many of us navigate in this world. That I would concede Hollywood has some Holly weird things going on, but this notion where people who can help you don't always help you and conceal information from you is actually in every industry, not just Hollywood. But the interesting part is that the scriptures call us to be different. The scriptures call followers of Jesus to be generous. And I think generosity is not just about finances. Let me show you a verse from Proverbs chapter 11. This says, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. It's interesting that verse 24 says to give freely and become more wealthy. That's a paradigm that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But then the very next verse, it doubles down on being generous, yet it seems like this definition of generosity is about refreshing others as well as being generous with our finances. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So while the world and all industries is not very generous in terms of helping us avoid mistakes, helping us to avoid the pitfalls many people face, like Matthew McConaughey probably has in Hollywood, the scriptures encourage Christians to do the opposite to be generous with our time, our treasure, to be generous with how we refresh others, because when we refresh others, we ourselves will be refreshed. And this is a beautiful part about the upside down kingdom that Jesus established. And speaking about the need to refresh others, it reminds me of one of my favorite videos we've done on this channel, the time Denzel Washington actually said some of the most refreshing things I've heard regarding his relationship with God, his perspective on manhood, and so much more. We'll have that pinned over here. Check that out. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.